try to do what is right, even if it seems there is no point in doing so. There was a woman back in my past, I was, I guess I can say, putting so much effort in trying to get back then. And when I finally got her back then, I was the type of person that saw women as very low creatures, I guess I can say, without trying to be rude or anything like that. So when I got her, we were in the process of a fornication and we were in the room and I am not going to get graphic. Please believe me. When I was looking upon her, like down on her, I did not see her face. Like imagine being with a person and knowing how that person's face looks like, but you see another face, a face that doesn't look human. Like as if someone, like you see my face right now, right? Now, let me put this hat in front of my face. Now, can you recognize my face? It was like as if someone put another face over her face. Like, I would say as clear as day. Like, if I remember correctly, that demon smile. Like, have you ever seen the Grinch? I think the Grinch, or what is that cat? What is that cat? Uh, what is that? The Mad Hatter? What is that? Alice in Wonderland? I think that cat smile can reach way up here or something like that. If I remember correctly, that demon smile was real wide. And when I saw it, like I got off the woman real quick and screamed. And you may say, you know, what is your point, Kevin? Try to do what is right, even though it may seem difficult. You may believe doing what is wrong is benefiting you. But do you actually see what is going on when you are doing wrong? I think, I believe it was God that gave me a glimpse. And when I saw that face over her face, I think it happened for maybe a split second because I was kind of scared to look at her face again. And then when I saw her face, I did not see that demon, that demonic face. But I believe God gave me a glimpse of what I was doing, of what maybe part of what is going on probably showed me what is in that woman? I guess partially. Not saying I did not have demons because I probably did. You may think doing wrong is in your best interest. You may believe, hey, since I can't do anything right or so many things right, let me just stay in sin but do you know what is going on do you see everything that is going on now i saw that demon its face at least 
What if in your room by you or following you, what if you were to see a room full of demons? Would you still think that doing wrong is benefiting you? Do you think, would you still think benefiting, would you still think sin is okay for you? I think one of the reasons why some people may think sinning is okay with them, maybe they can't see everything that is going on. Maybe they can't really connect the bad things happening in their lives with their sins, which I truly believe that is the case. What if you were to see a graph of all the bad things you have done with the bad things that happened to you, if you were able to connect everything, yes, I believe some bad things may happen to us even though we try to do what's right, but I believe too, we reap what we sow. So what if you had a graph connecting everything? Would you still think sinning is in your best interest as in giving yourself over to it without really trying to do what is right listen now sometimes i have really really demonic dreams like real bad dreams i would say and i think when i have them like it gives me, what word am I trying to use? I believe it gives me more, not so much encouragement, but more, I guess, confirmation that there are really bad things out there. There is security in Jesus Christ. There is protection in Jesus Christ. Yes, did some people die for Jesus Christ? Yes. But I believe there is security, protection, and so much more in Jesus Christ. Would you go in the jungle <laughs> where there are lions, tigers, and all types of dangerous creatures, would you go there unprotected? Would you not bring a gun? Would you not bring some type of cage or something to protect yourself? That is Jesus Christ. Would you go in the jungle and place all types of pork chops and steaks and ham hocks and, and chicken wings all over your body and put some type of scent on you to where those predators can <laughs> track you <laughs> so much better. Would you do that? I hope not. Look now, the way I am now is so much better than the way I was before. Before I had more money. I think I had more popularity. I was more fashionable. I was more, I was stronger. Probably in a carnal sense, I may have been the best at that time in a carnal sense. Even though I may have this or had that or whatever else, I was not really happy. I believe I was depressed, hateful, spiteful, angryful. Like, I was not, even though I had more, I was not happy. Even though I would cuss people out, even though I would steal and 
make money and I think I would make money. Yeah, make money and had jewelry and girlfriends, more than one. And even though I had those things and more, I was not content. I have less now. <laughs> I have less in that sense. But my mindset is so much better. I have peace. I have joy. Yes, sometimes I may get depressed or whatever else. But things are so much better now. I think some people may say, Kevin, I don't want to live for God now because it is boring or I can't fornicate or I can't uh, cuss women out or I can't, you know, have, you know, six girlfriends or I can't do these carnal things. And in a way, I kind of thought in that same way in the beginning. But as I learned more of God, as I researched God, as I understood God more, I have small interest in those things or none. Because if you began noticing or experiencing the benefits of God, like those carnal things will mean less and less to you. There's something I was praying with a person on and off for maybe, uh, maybe a year or more on and off. And things are coming into place as if like we are <laughs> configuring a puzzle, you know, just putting the pieces into it. Actually, I would say it's as if God is placing the pieces into the puzzle. And we were praying on and off, like miraculous things have happened for me and my prayer partner. Like, can I say mind-blowing? Maybe... I don't know, but some really shocking stuff. What I have in Jesus Christ now, which I am not saying I have a whole lot, like Uncle Kev is over there bragging. No, what I have in Christ right now. I don't want to trade it for more women or more money or, you know, like, let me take this valuable thing and trade it for something sinful, which I'm not saying money is sinful. But if you understand what I am trying to say to you, I don't want to trade it. I value what I have in Christ now. Kevin, how can you go through life and do seemingly well in Jesus Christ? I am determined. I mess up. Yes, I mess up. But I try not to make a habit of it. I like people having, some people having blind trust in me. What do you mean by blind trust? Like, trust me so much. Like, trust me with their, I guess some people trust me with their money and this and that and this. That is a very good feeling. With their cars and stuff like that. Knowing that I am not going to do some really bad stuff to their property. Hmm. I like this life. Yes, I don't go to clubs. Yes, I don't go to bars and watch women dance like I used to. I don't be doing really bad things. Well, let me say it in this way. I don't do like really horrible things 
to people. I don't mess around as badly as I did back in my past. See, I think when some people are in sin, they may see that type of life as very cool because maybe they don't have much experience in trying to live for God. So if you are used to a certain type of life, you may see that life as being like really good to you. And if you don't really know how living for God is, you may begin assuming the worst. Like, uh, it is boring. When I get to heaven, all we gonna do is sing hymns and get down on our knees and pray all day and and you know you may have like <laughs> ignorant <laughs> thoughts of what you believe living for god is this life truly is amazing like <sighs> prayers and some of my dreams and and other things and influencing people as it seems to speak about God or whatever else, this life is amazing. See, you are on the outside looking in. Kevin, you know, Christian life is boring. How long have you been living for God consistently? One week, six months five months, then how can you say it is boring then if you have been doing it for a little time? As you live for Jesus Christ, at least if you are trying to do it earnestly, I believe your mind will begin renewing. Like, I believe your mind is going to begin changing. For a while, I missed my old life. But as I started to understand, like, hey, I was doing things that was hurting myself. So once I started to understand that, that old life was not as, I guess, glorious as I thought. If I thought that way. It was doing me harm. Yes, I like certain things. But when I think about how hard it was for me to break away from certain things, it's not worth it. I was in, I guess I can call it the sin loop <laughs> where I was repeating certain sins over and over and over and over again. Like I would try to live for God then fall down, then try again, then fall down, then lose encouragement, then sin, 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 bad things, bad things, bad things, bad things would happen to me. Then I will go back in that loop over and over and over again. And I am not saying I do everything right correctly now, but I am not in that loop. That loop was horrible so horrible so why would i do something to place myself back in that loop again no way i don't like that i like being free from that loop that sin loop <sighs> look i think some people place so much effort in playing video games I think some people place so much effort in placing makeup on their face or doing their hair or doing their eyebrows. I think some people place so much effort in doing some things they really like. Okay, 
that effort you are placing in those activities, place that effort or greater in trying to live for Jesus Christ. Make it a priority. I think that is one of the reasons some people are having a harder time in trying to live for Jesus Christ because maybe they are making Jesus a side dish as in, you know, let me college is the main part, like the main course. And my girlfriend is like my peas. Am I saying that right? <laughs> my peas. And then like, you know, God is like the carrots or something like that. Like the side dish. If I am explaining that correctly. You have to make God the entree. Like 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 the main dish then college and family and all that stuff there so make god first well kevin if i place god first then i am not going to do well in college so what quit Kevin, if I place God first, I am not going to make as much money. So what? Quit. Kevin, I want that Maserati. Kevin, I want that Mercedes. Kevin, I want that Lexus. I want that BMW, Kevin. So if I place God first, I can't get those things. So look now. Look. We all have to die, right? We all have to die. Can you take that Maserati to hell? Can you take that Mercedes that, what is that, that Rolls Royce? Can you take that to heaven or hell? I don't think so. All the time you are placing to gather a bunch of possessions on this earth, can you take that with you to the eternal? To the next realm? I don't think so. If you can't, what's the point? If this life is going to determine where I am going to be next, why am I working so hard for this world? I'm working, not saying me, for an example, I'm working 18 hours a day, 16 hours a day. After that, I'm hanging out with my wife or girlfriend, then I'm going to sleep, then I go to college, then, like, I have no time to spend with God. Then I die. Will God ask me what type of car I had? What type of jewelry I had? How many possessions I had? How many degrees I had? Kevin, you know, what type of... Did you have a MD or a bachelor degree? Is God going to care about that? I believe what God is going to ask me, what did I do for him? Not what I did for myself. Like, what did I do according to his word? I think many of us, or some of us, or all of us, get distracted off of what is the point in this life. This life is not so much about trying to be successful in getting as much as you can, you know, get rich or die trying. No, you are being distracted. You are wasting your time. Make God first. 
put God first. Read your Bible. Pray. Try to better yourself more and more. Place him first in your life. Even if you won't have as much stuff as another or be as popular as another, so what? You are not living so much for this world, but for the next. That's the whole point. Living in this world for the next. Myself. I am living in this world for the next. Yes, for my age, I may not have what people have. <laughs> Other men my age, I may not have the same things that they have. But who cares? I'm not living for this world. I am setting myself up for the next. So some people may look down on me, Kevin. You know, you should have this and you should have that and you should be doing this and you should be doing that. Look now. Many people that may be doing those things may not be going to the right place. Place in the afterlife. So in this world, I may be low. I may be low. <laughs> but hey, I'm looking to be higher in the next realm. I hope this makes sense. I am only going to be here, what? I don't know. 30 more years, 50 more years, 20, 10. I don't know when I am going to die, but I know when I die, I am going to be wherever I am, or I believe I am going to be in the next world, I guess I can say, longer for an eternity than here. I am not going to be in this existence for an eternity. Maybe 10 to, I don't know, short time, not over 100 years, I don't think. But in, in the eternity, over a thousand years, over 10,000 years, over probably, probably over 10,000 forever, for, for, for an eternity, right? So if that be the case, why not focus on the life that I am going to be in longer than where I am at now? Man, I hope this makes sense. Kevin, you know, I want to be like those rich people. I want to be all glamorous and, and have so much stuff. This world is going to be made over again. So if this world is going to be remade, if I am saying that correctly, what is going to happen to everything on this earth now? I believe it's going to be destroyed. So if everything is going to be destroyed, why work so hard on it? Uh, why work so hard for something? Let me, let me ask you this. If you are planning to build a house that is going to take you 50 years to build, would you build it if I told you, hey, once you build that whole house, I am going to burn it down and let's say you have no way in stopping me. Would you build that house? You may say, well, Kevin, I would beat you up or I would do this to you. I would call the police. No, let's say there is no way you could stop me. Would you waste 50 years and build a house in vain? Ah, uh, please listen. Please listen. You working for this world is vanity if you are not placing God first. You trying to get so many possessions on this earth, but not looking for your eternal, but not looking toward God, I guess I can say, is you are living in vain. Vanity, right? I don't really like to waste time in some cases. Let me do what I have to get it over. Like, I don't like, for instance, 
If there is something I don't really like doing, let me do it right the first time. I think much of the time I try to do that because I don't want to go back to it and redo it and redo it. No, let me get it done the first time and I forget exactly why I brought that up. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I guess <laughs> this is telling me to stop here. Let me stop here. God bless you.